In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to review with you what Eva did here in this visualization to create a trend line for only a single member of a dimension. So Eva had asked me on Sunday how to do something like this, so I thought I'd share it with you as well. So for this example, I'm going to use the same data set that Eva is using. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and filter down to my state of New York because I know that's the state that she used. And if I flip back over to her viz, you'll see that she has, it looks like monthly uh, births across time by county. So I'm going to right click and drag the date field to the columns, choose my continuous months, put births on the rows, and then county on detail. Okay, so now we, we have the, 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 uh, the start of her visualization. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want the user to be able to pick the county that, or actually I want them to be able to just uh, specify Suffolk County. So Suffolk looks like it's somewhere in the middle here. So where is it here? So there's Nassau, Westchester, Suffolk County. There we go. Okay, so what we need to be able to do is um, we need to be able to, uh, first thing we need to do is create a calculated field. I'm going to say Suffolk County births. And I'm just going to say something like if the county is equal to Suffolk County, New York, then return the birth, the number of births. And the reason I'm not putting an else in there is because I don't want anything to be returned for any of the other counties. So again, I'm going to hover over and just make sure that I spelled everything right. So it's Suffolk County, New York. Great. Hit OK. And now what I want to do is I want to drag Suffolk County to the secondary axis, right click and synchronize. Okay, so now you can see Suffolk County is in there twice, uh, but that's okay, one's just laid on top of the other. So I'm going to rearrange these so this one's always in front. And now I'm going to actually match her mark colors. So she made Suffolk County green, and then she made the rest of the births, the rest of the counties, a light gray. Okay. So now if I flip back over to hers, you'll see we're pretty similar at this point. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to go ahead and hide this header on this side. And I'm going to do a bit of cleanup. So let's do, uh, let's do format. And it looks like she has just grid lines every thousand. That's okay. Let's just leave it like that for now. Good enough. Okay. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and hide my indicator. So that indicator is showing up because it's all of the other counties. And what I want to do now is I'm going to go to my um, my uh, marks card, I'm sorry, my analytics pane, and I'm going to drag a trend line on to just the Suffolk County. So if I drag that on there, you can see now I have a uh, trend line for just Suffolk County. So let me go ahead and duplicate this sheet and show you what happens if we don't have Suffolk County. So if I take Suffolk County off and I drag on a trend line, you'll see that gives me a trend line for the overall. If I, if I stuck county on color, for example, so let's, let me take measure names off of the marks card, and let's put county name on color, we actually get a trend line for each color. So by using a secondary axis and creating a, a, a separate measure, we actually can create a, uh, that gives us, we can put the trend line just on that axis. But let's say we want to make this a bit more dynamic. We want it to be, um, we want, we want them to be able to choose the county that they want to highlight and put the trend line on. Okay, so for that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add a data source filter. So I'm going to filter down to just New York. Hit OK and hit OK again. So now I can actually remove New York and it's not going to make a difference. You see there. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a parameter. So create parameter and I'm just going to call it uh, choose a county and you'll see we get all of these counties listed it pre-populates it with all of the ones from New York okay so the reason I did the uh, data source filter first was because I wanted to just highlight the New York counties so let's show that parameter control and now you can see we've got all this list of counties in here okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually 
uh, let's let's duplicate this sheet. Let's do it twice. So I'm going to now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new calculated field and I'm going to say um, births for selected county. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if the county is equal to my parameter, so choose a county, then births, end. So same idea except this time I'm passing the parameter in instead. So births for selected county, I'm going to replace that on the secondary axis. And again, it's already synchronized, so that's okay. So I'm just going to check the show header. And now I can pick any county, and you'll see my reference line move. All right, so if I want to pick this county up here, which is Kings County, which is in near New York City, you'll see the trend is up for them. If we pick Queens, we can see Queens looks like it's ever so slightly down. Maybe the next one is the Bronx. So Bronx County and so on and so forth. Okay, so there's two examples. Um, one is with a parameter and one is without. But uh, hopefully that helps you understand how you can create a trend line for a single member of a dimension. And that's it for today. Have a good day.